Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona. This is reference 116519. You can see and you can purchase this white gold meteorite dial Rolex Daytona on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high-resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona. Now the watch on my wrist represents a late F series, so roughly late 2003, early 2004 Rolex in-house caliber Daytona. 40 millimeters in white gold, it's hefty considering a large part of its surface area is the rubber strap. That's due primarily to Rolex's use of broad stamped cases and solid gold case backs. 40 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the crown guards or the screw down chronograph pushers, which I should clarify are screwed out for use right now. The watch is reasonably slim at only 12.2 millimeters thick with a generously sloped sapphire and conical bezel. This is an easy watch to wear with a dress cuff and I strongly encourage that you do so if you buy this model. Now without the solid end links of a bracelet, the watch's lug-to-lug -lug dimension is true. It fits 47.3 across the wrist, and it measures 47.3 millimeters across the wrist. In my estimation, you could wear this watch securely on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. Now, the timepiece does have a substantial clasp and strap apparatus, starting with these special coupling end links that visually integrate the strap into the form of the lugs. These Rolex Daytona's on straps do have a special sort of interlock of bezel on top of end link. So if for whatever reason you wanted to use this with a bracelet, it would require a little bit of surgery by your authorized dealer. It is built to be used on a strap. And as you can see, with hardly any daylight visible between the end of the strap and the flank of that intermediate link, it is a highly coherent and integrated look. Now the strap is substantial, bolstered down at center, stitched monotone with folded edges. It is a semi-gloss black rectangular scale alligator leather. Again, this being an F-series watch, it does feature the earlier clasp design. This one features incremental sizing pin slots, but it does not feature Easy Link. It does feature Rolex's proprietary gray gold, Rolex's homogenous alloy version of white gold, more on that in a moment, and it is double finished, both satin and polish, with a clamshell closure mechanism. Now, about gray gold. White gold is a sort of catch-all term that the general public uses to describe generally an 18 karat gold alloy that appears to be silvery white. Now there are a couple of different ways to achieve this. You can have a cheap milky yellow substrate that's then plated with rhodium or in cheap cases, exceptionally cheap cases, nickel, or you can create what's called gray gold. Now Rolex has its own foundry, it has its own metallurgical labs, it creates its own alloys. As a result, Rolex gray gold is what you see here. It's similar to what's used today in Patek Philippe and Jaguar Lecoult. It looks exactly like white gold. It is 18 karat white gold, but if you were to scratch it or scuff it, what happens is there is just more white metal underneath. There is no milky yellow body of the metal that needs to be plated, and thus this never needs to be plated, even if you scratch or scuff it. Now moving inboard, you can see that the lacquer fill of the bezel is beautifully intact. On these older watches, a sign of overfinishing is usually the disappearance of the lacquer from the calibrations of the tachymeter scale. Here you can see beautifully intact as are the lines and the volume of the case. The watch is defined, however, by its spectacular meteorite dial. Now let me see if I can bring this one into slightly better focus because I really want to hone in on the dial here. It uses what is called the Widmanstaden project, or I should say process, and it is a product of essentially a partial oxidizing of the iron of the meteorite used to create the dial, and then it is essentially stabilized so that the grain of the oxidized metal is forever visible. No two of these dials are exactly alike, but you can see that Rolex didn't stop there. The dial is substantially enlivened by the addition of diamond polished and highly stylized white gold Roman numerals, white gold hands to match at center, and a few shocks of red that really make this watch pop. Now, the timepiece, 
features a slight countersink to its sub-registers, which you can see to good effect from this angle. So there's another plane of focus. The red of the Daytona script, as well as chronograph seconds in the sub-registers, is perfectly chosen, just enough to give the watch color and character. It's not antiseptic, it's not grayscale, and again, you really do need to appreciate this meteorite dial in person to grasp its depth and its luster. It is something out of this world, figuratively and literally. Now, inside is Rolex's Caliber 4130, three-day power reserve, automatic winding, column wheel, vertical clutch, chronometer, chronograph caliber. What does all that mean? Well, it's manufactured entirely by Rolex. It succeeded the old El Primero, based caliber 4030 in the year 2000. The vertical clutch means you can leave the chronograph running continuously with no additional wear and tear. And because there's no play in the vertical clutch system, watch the seconds hand. There's no jump when I start it. There's no stagger when I stop it. And it always resets precisely to the index at 12 because again, there are no meshing teeth in a vertical clutch. It has no play. The column wheel ensures crisp actuation. It's a tactile pleasure, you feel it, you hear it. It's the traditional and more challenging way, slightly more expensive way too, to make a chronograph, but it's the only way Rolex knows. The timepiece also features hacking seconds, so if you screw out the crown, pull it out, you will stop the balance halting the seconds and allowing the watch to be synchronized precisely to a reference time. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer and thus very accurate featuring a free sprung balance with a full balance bridge. The two features combining to make the watch robustly resistant to shock and vibration-induced timing deviation. It also features a Breguet overcoil hairspring, which promotes concentric beating of the hairspring and helps the watch to keep more regular time in varying positions with respect to gravity, thus effectively giving the watch better isochronism and precision in any position or any orientation. The timepiece finally features the screw-down chronograph pushers and screw-down crown, boasting 100 meter water resistance, a Versatile timepiece, iconic of motorsport, but appropriate in any setting. You can see and you can own this F-Series white gold Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona.